you guys literally have come up with the best of the best. Unbelievable. In 15 years in a row, you keep doing it. Good morning, sir. Morning. We've got Sinja Benegas on the camera today because Zach is on family vacation. He's from the world famous Gas Monkey Garage. Thanks for being here, Sinjin. Thank you, sir. 5.25 in the morning, we're catching a red eye to Chicago O'Hare. From there, we're going to Rosemont to McCacken. What is McCacken? Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals. And what is significant about this show, and my favorite thing about it, is they have a large section of barn finds and unrestored muscle cars and Corvettes. So grab your cup of joe, let's go see what's cracking at McCacken. So I love my rowdy rear engine cars. One of my favorite things about the uh, Raycon Everyday Earbuds is they're noise isolating. Since I have severe tinnitus, it helps me a lot. Raycon's really made a name for themselves in the high-tech premium audio out there. They've done a great job. They also have a new line of Raycon Home and Raycon PowerTech products like their Magic 180 charging cable and faucet filter. They have free shipping, free returns, payment options, everything under the sun. Great premium tech products at a great price. They've had tens of thousands of five-star reviews. Great quality and great affordable prices. What a killer Christmas gift. Go to buyraycon.com slash coffeewalk to get 15% off site-wide. And right now, Raycon is offering limited time bundles on some of their best-selling products, including fitness kits and everyday audio kits and several others. Go to buyraycon.com slash coffeewalk to get 15% off site-wide. This is going to be the most affordable, best gift you're going to get your friends or family members. Do it. So we got Mr. Colin Comer here, expert on Shelby's, Cobras. Allegedly. Well, I think you are. Yeah. I've read your books. Yeah. And a great author, so thanks for taking you're the time guy, to do you're that. You're the guy who read them? Yeah. Thank I'm you. that guy. Thank you. <laughs> we got Sinjin on the camera today. Good morning. So we're going to go check in, put our bags up, and then get after it. But quick explanation of what McCacken is. 15 years ago, uh, Myself and a group of friends, we decided we wanted to have the best all makes muscle car show on the planet. Okay. This planet, of course. But gotcha. We decided to put this thing together. We thought this would be a one year deal. We'll get all of our friends to bring all their cool cars, we'll bring all the good stuff. And now, 15 years later, here we are doing it every year. And every year we go, how are we going to top it next year? You know, it's so hard to find these cars. But, you know, it's kind of like Field of Dreams. We built it. Right. And they came. So here's my favorite thing about your show is the unrestored cars and the barn finds. Yeah. I think it's amazing that you guys open that market up because that's what I honestly appreciate the most. Well, we're both okay. originality survivor guys. I mean, so. I understand the restored, perfect yes. L88 Corvettes, right. 427, right. 435 horse cars, really appreciate them. I'd rather have an original car. You can't restore in originality. Right. You know, no offense to the restored cars, but... No, no I don't mean to offend them at all, but... No, but... There's a, and there's a difference between a survivor and a car that simply survived. Right. I know we like the survivors, but the barn find section is unbelievable. And you got to check out the vintage certification. Uh, it's like a six hour inspection process to certify these cars. It's authentic. Wow. Um, original cars that look like they just rolled out of the showroom. So that's going to blow you away when we got over there. 
But uh, you kind of came in, you came into the cheap seats here. This is okay. the landing area. All right. I'm gonna take you up front and show you the good stuff. So well, really, let's get our bags checked in and let's get after it. How much time can you stay with us? I can spend as much as you want. All right, awesome. Is that, is that where the money is? That's where the money is, right there. No, it's right okay. there. It's right there. Okay, let's go. We're gonna start off with the main aisle. It's nine in the morning. They just did the national anthem, and yes, we had our hands on our hearts. We did. Look how many people are here. The show just opened. Yeah, it's gonna be like this all day. And we have the ultimate tour guide for sure. Well, let's see for this see. show. Yeah, for the maybe. Maybe. Okay. So it's kind of cool when you walk through the front door and you see the red carpet. And every year the display on the red carpet is different. So okay. this year we've got Who's the Boss? It's all Boss Mustangs and one Boss SUV that you, you like. Wow. Okay. One of one Boss 351. So what makes this one one off? Uh, 71. You got it. 71, there you 71 go. Boss 302 prototype. Bob Perkins found it. I have read about that car. Yeah. So that's it. Car. Yep. Wow. And then I'd put this display together. Okay. See, I'm a Cobra guy, but I'm also a Cheetah guy. That's my Cheetah. Okay. So the Cheetah was designed to beat the Cobra. And GM funneled a bunch of money out the back door during the racing band to Bill Thomas to build the car and kill the Cheetah. I right. Mean, kill the Cobra. Yeah, all day. So here we have a Comp Cobra and a competition Cheetah because I want to tell the story a little bit about Cheetah versus Cobra. So maybe this weekend some people will get more of the context of they built 11 of these cars, the factory burned down. But if the factory wouldn't have burned down, they would have had a little time to develop it. I think we would have had a good battle here. So these are two of the most reproduced reproduction cars out there. Absolutely, yeah. But I've never actually, um, well, maybe I shouldn't say this, but there's some reproduction Cobras that are really, really, really good. Right. And there's a very few reproduction Cheetahs that are really, really, really good. And they were, and, and when they were new, Bill Thomas was selling chassis and bodies. You could buy the parts from Bill right. Thomas to build your own Cheetah. But I think they're, they're still some floating around. They, they've done a couple different variations. They still, there's companies that pop up, just like the Cobras. There's a company that pop up will buy a, a Cheetah replica or a continuation car. Right. Uh, somebody got the rights to the name. They were building cars. But when you get down the real cars, they made 11 of them. They made seven competition cars and four street cars. That's serial number four. It was one of the two pro sale te uh, team cars. So, so the yellow one is, hot, is the most famous one, right? I can't remember what the name of that car well, is. Well, the two pro sale cars are probably the most famous ones. Okay. So they, they, this one and then the, the, the one the one with the Roadster. So the two cars, they went to Daytona. This car and the other car went to Daytona. The top of the doors blew off of this car. The roof blew off the other car. So they cut the roof off the other car and made a Roadster and they glue the top of the doors back on this one, put those little tabs on the road Very cool. to hold the doors back on the next time. But they went 215 miles an hour at Daytona the first time out of the gate. You want to talk about big crass. So, you know, yeah, but. so let's put that in perspective. <laughs> They're not even running that fast right now in NASCAR. No, no. Not even close. No. There's to you, NASCAR, you're too slow. <laughs> yeah. yeah now, now, now imagine strapping a car with fuel tanks all the way around you and behind you that weighs 1,500 pounds. And what year did that run at Daytona? 63, 64. Running 215 and 63, 64. Then what did we get? We're in 2023. 20, we're not running that fast. Yeah. No aerodynamic aids whatsoever. The thing's designed like a wing of an airplane. That's incredible. I mean, there had to be no steering input at, at 150 miles an hour. I can't imagine the front wheels are doing anything. So we've so. been here for one minute and all we saw was the 71 prototype Boss 351, a Comp Cobra, and a Cheetah. Let's yep. keep rolling. Yeah, let's do it. Boss 9 section. Yeah, this whole front red carpet area is Boss Fords. So I, I was going to say Mustangs, but I stopped myself because there's one thing here that's not a Mustang. But okay. So we've got Boss 9s, Boss 302s, Boss 351s, Bob Perkins. You know, Bob Perkins, he put this thing together. So usually when we do a special display, we get the kind of the, the expert on the subject. And right. Nobody knows more about Boss Mustangs than Bob Perkins. So he called all of his buddies and we got the best of the best. Ed Meyer's pretty good. Ed Meyer's pretty good. Yeah, Ed Meyer's pretty good. <laughs> Bob's outstanding. I get it. Bob, no, they're both Bob, outstanding. Bob and Ed are, you know, they work together. So if you look at this, and I love the colors, you know. The like boss, green the boss there. cars are amazing. That's killer. That's crazy. Lime green, a dark green interior, only, only in the early 70s. So, you know, I always liked the greens and the gold. Yeah. Uh, obviously, they were popular back then. Right. But for some reason, you know, in the 90s and 
80s and 90s, that was the most color changed thing. Yeah. And yeah. now they're going back to original. Color. Exactly. Like blind yeah. gold Shelby. So I was just going to say, you can turn it around my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They all became red or blue or black. <laughs> Probably $3 million worth of cars just in this short yeah. run. How many Boss 9s there? 69 Boss 302s. Those are fucking half 200 a copy for a decent one. More than sat nice. Yeah. I love how you got all the different colors too. Yeah. It's kind of like a, somebody spilled the Skittles. Right. <laughs> boss Bronco. Yeah, now I said there was one SUV bus here. Okay. Now I'm, I'll, go, I'll get it right out in front of this problem and tell you this is my truck. Okay. So I'm not trying, I'm not trying to sell you, but I know it is. Is it for sale? No. It's not for sale. Okay. <laughs> but it, it's one of one. It's the Boss Bronco prototype. They're going to make a special high performance Bronco. Okay. And Bunky Knudsen was the head of Ford at the time, and uh, Shinoda designed the car to go with the Boss Mustang. Okay. So I have the internal engineering documents were built a special high performance Bronco. They sent to Carcraft, they had Bill Strop come in and build it at Carcraft with all the guys who built the Boss Nines and all the race cars and all that stuff. Lee Iacocca famously kicked Knudsen because he was a GM guy. They threw him out of Ford and convinced the Ford family to get rid of, get rid of Knudsen. Iacocca took over, canceled all the projects. So anything that, anything that he stamped okay on was done. So that was done. And the paper came through the crushing. But then Carcraft got caught with some accounting errors that were in their favor, not in Ford's favor. And they sold everything off. They shut down and sold everything off. And that car, that truck escaped. So to trump a strong Bronco is difficult. Right. That's one of the only Broncos in the world that trumps. A strong. Right. And right. there so all the stuff on it was kinda like the first application of the stuff that went on the Baja Broncos. Wow, that is so I mean, cool. Balance proof printed GT350 engine, 351. It's the first Bronco ever had an automatic transmission. It has uh, 411 gears front and rear, Ozzy front and rear, put 10 inch wide wheels on. I mean, they made a hot rod Bronco. So this is the precursor to the straw. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. Just think of what just think of what would happen if they would have actually made like a hot rod, you know, such an off road focus vehicle. This was supposed to be kind of like today's Raptor car. I think they were still having the problems back in the day, you know, and I mean Shelby had these problems, Concord had the problems. Scaling it was always an issue. Right. Because right. it wasn't done at the factory. Yeah. So I mean you you just had too many too many hours at it. You just, right. Right. And they yeah. had the parts. But you know, all the other Broncos at the time were three speeds, you know, they didn't have any automatics. So it's a cool truck and it disappeared. It was gone for forty years. You know, the guy, the guy that worked in Carcraft figured out a way to get it out of there and they took the stripes off and hit it. So you know, historically some of the rarest cars that I found that were scheduled to be crushed, like Firebirds one, two, three, five, a lot of that early stuff. Um, most of those I found in Canada. Because I think they it was supposed to disappear. Yeah, right. Well, they disappeared in the Get them out of here. Yeah. So I've, I've had a number of early cars, prototype cars, and oddly enough, I found them in Canada because ah. they weren't supposed to be here anymore. Right, right. And how? And how? This was titled as 1970 to throw them off the set. When he went and got a title, not a 69, it's a 70. Wow, that is cool. That's yeah. awesome. Bronco. And he always told his kids. He said, "I just made it to look like a bumblebee. I wanted a bumblebee Bronco." I can't even imagine what that's worth. <laughs> I, I have a pretty good idea, but. Staggering yeah. figure what that's worth. Unrestored. Is it really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 200 actual miles. Yeah. Kind of odd Mustang that you're probably one of the only guys that knows what it is. Remember the program, the Grammar Blue Cars, they were called That Going Thing? I do remember that, yeah. Have you ever seen one in person? I have not. I have not. Wow, it's such a cool story what yeah. they did on those cars because basically what they did was they ordered them and they had a track date and you came out and drove it on the track and picked out the one you wanted. Okay. And wow. they were anywhere from a 302 to a 351 to a 428. That? Either 69 or 70. Okay. But I've never seen one in person. I was yeah. just wonder if there was one here. I haven't seen one yet, but I'm just walking through this from the front door with you for the first okay. time. Okay. All right. Well, we, work, we work on it all year. <laughs> but this is the first time you've seen it, too. This is the first time I've seen it laid out. Right. Well, you want to hit the Cougars first since we're still here? Yeah, yeah, we going yeah. to eat Mopars? Yeah, I mean, we're going to look at weird stuff. Is there a Boss Cougar here? Boss 429 Cougar? It's a Boss 302 Cougar right here. Okay. And again, look at that color. So the Boss 9 Cougars, how many of those did they make? Oh, okay. a handful. Right? Yeah, yeah. So yes, they actually made a Boss 429. And Carcraft made some really cool prototypes. Of, you know, 
rumble seat boss four turn and mustangs and all kinds of stuff like that they made some crazy pooper combinations too it's a restore car or understore yeah restore it's stuck looks brand new so, so this car Meekum recently sold this right yes for north of two million dollars yeah it's in hiding forever okay um, and what's the quick story on this car it was, it was a, a rapid transit show car, a rapid transit system Mopar show car. So it toured around with the, with the RTS team. And uh, it was the one prototype car that my late friend Steve Giuliano, who assembled all the rapid transit cars he could, he could just never buy this car. This car was never for sale. Despite how much he offered the guy, he wouldn't sell it. Uh, but, you know, things changed. And finally, the car went, got dug out and went to Meekum. And, uh, but back in the day, a lot of these really hairy, wild show cars were scrapped, weren't they? Right. Yeah. Or, or change it to a street car. Right, or turn back into a street car. Because so. Chrysler employees can go to the company garage and buy one of these old show cars. You, know, you can go in there and buy any car for 1500 bucks, and they drive it on the streets, and they cut the front end off and put windows in or whatever they need to drive it. So what was the initial backstory, if you can reveal it? What was, when this car was found and bought, what was, a, what was the price? Before no it became idea. famous at two million bucks. I have no idea. Okay. But it's untouched. It's unrestored. That's that's the paint that was put on it for the show. Uh, the original designer for the car is here this week. And the guy, Chuck Miller, yeah, he designed it, built it, put it together all that stuff. So uh, he's here this weekend. Incredibly significant cars here. Yeah. I mean, it, and I think it's a, it's a 446 spec Shaker Hood Cuda. So it's a real V code car. Yeah. That itself is cool. Yeah. Fox body Mustangs by Steve Celine. Yeah. Now it's it's basically. All Celines, but we weighted it heavily towards Fox body cars because gotcha. that's where it's at. It's kind of the 65 GT350 of, of our generation. Agreed. I'm not trying to. I kind of like. I kind of like. The, age, I kind of like the sat cars too. Yeah. That they did. And yeah, they're, I mean, they're neat. rare. That I mean, that was a neat car that they built. Right. And you got an S7 over here, which S810. is a 10. Now these cars are extremely rare. Yeah. Not and, coupe. And these things really mm -hmm. took off about five years ago. I'm not sure why, yeah. but some guy sold 42 of them. I was right behind you. I had 11 of them. <laughs> Selena S7, a, a supercar, if you will, kind of ahead of its time. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, if you look at the chassis of this car, it's all, all high choice and all race cars. Right, right. Full blown. Now, now, Lance Miller owns this car. Really? And you know Lance. Mm -hmm. You know, he owns Carlisle Events. You know, Miller family, best car people on the face of the earth. Incredible. Uh, Took it in, they haven't worked on it, blew the windshield out of the thing, but Lance is a good guy, he's a car guy, and he's like, I'll bring it to the show without a windshield. So we've been uh, messing with him a little bit. There's been a different sign on the car about every hour about why it doesn't have a windshield. Oh, really? <laughs> and what's the real story? The real story is he broke it. Okay. <laughs> You're the most camera. famous Bronco guy on the planet that doesn't own the Moss Bronco. Right. No, but, I, <laughs> but, but I did get first dibs, by the way. Do you remember that story? Right? Yeah. I got yeah, first yeah, yeah. I was in Home Depot. I was in the aisle in Home Depot looking for concrete. I get this call, and he goes, I've got a very special Bronco. And I say, what kind of special Bronco? I'm looking at a special Bronco right now. And uh, at the Boss Bronco, and he sends me pictures. I'm looking at these pictures. And I go, that's pretty cool. But I'm saving my dry powder for the first Bronco, which we also have. We right. have two of the best Broncos on the planet. Yeah, but you brought Bronco building. serial number one here? We brought serial. All go. zeros, remember? All zeros in the bin. So uh, we found yeah. on the windshield, it has a, uh, a little emblem on that windshield that from the maker. It says, Produ uh, prototype, do not drive. Uh, so someone ignore that. That's cool. We'll swing by here. Yeah, that'd be good. Be good. good to see you, sir. Good to see you. Find you. All right. Now these cars here. And these. How are you, sir? Love you, man. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. This is kind of a cool story here. So they made like 20 early Celines with a big wing on the back. So it's got that kind of real big whale tail on it. Okay. These three cars, consecutive serial numbers, all sold by the same dealership. New. They all sat in the showroom together in 1985. That is cool. And they're back together here. I've never seen that color on one. Are you happy about that? You gotta hurt my feelings, but I've never, <laughs> I've never seen that color on one. It's cool. It's cool. Wow. I, I, I like the blue. Serial numbers. That is really cool. The Regatta Blue is really cool. That is. But yeah, to have these things back together. I personally really have a soft spot for the 67s and 68s. I know everybody loves the 69s, yeah. which I do too. I just think the 67 and 68s have so much more character. And the production figures are lower. Right, 67 is my favorite. Okay. You know. Cal did you get the cowl induction? Yeah, my uh, smoky unit. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Very, very cool. That's a rare 2, one. 2,300 mile sure. car with 488 gears in the factory. 2,300 miles with 488 gears. Unbelievable. Or drag race. 
buy a car like that, probably twist them within 8,000 RPM would be fast. Yeah. And cars cool. like this, you know, concept cars. I mean, the significance of most of these cars here are just amazing. A 2300 mile 68Z, Concept 68 It's stuff you're just never going to see. Now, it's pretty much, you could almost pluck any car out of here and put it in a collection and have it be the star of the collection. That is strong. When you think about it, like when you have one of one Hemi cars or right. Concept cars or prototypes, you pluck that out here and you put it in, in a good muscle car collection. Right. What's cool is, I mean, this is the definitive place to see muscle cars. Right. And, and you know, when you think about it, for 30 bucks you get a ticket and you come in here, and there's 560 cars here this year roughly. Think about the average value of the cars. I mean, are you seeing a billion dollars of muscle cars for 30 bucks? I mean, not a bad deal. This is the Mecca. This is the place to go. 401 Z code car. I, mean, I think in the Shelby world, but in most worlds they consider this tuxedo, right? This is black and white tier. So I've had a, quite a few of these cars. I have the Z code or my service manager has it now, the Pierre Cardin car. But here, with a 401 Z code. You're an AMC guy yeah. by, you know, just by association. Right, with just by association right. with G. And we did just finish the Alabama, the Alabama Hammer, by the way, is finished, which is the Alabama Highway Patrol car with okay. the 401. Oh, wow. We just did a full restoration on that, and it will be a Bear Jackson. Good to meet you, man. Love your YouTube stuff. Thank you for watching. All the time. Thanks for watching, sir. Okay, so what's your favorite pick in the Buick section? Well, I haven't walked them all yet, but I'll okay. tell you, uh, it's kind of hard to go, go past this and not want it. I agree. Black on black Grand Sport. So, 65. Grand Sport's dual quad car. Right. Clamshell headlights. To me, 65's the year. I agree. I had a 65 GS when I was in high school, and I don't know why I ever got rid of it, other than I was young and stupid. So, I'm so stupid, but I'm not young. <laughs> but, I would buy another one of these if I could. What a stud car. Unbelievable, isn't it? 1980 inspection sticker. Can't quite see the miles, but I imagine it's crazy low. But to restore one of these to this level is crazy expensive. Restore a black car and make it look like that. Incredible. Hey, these headlights are crazy complicated when you've got them ripped apart. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. I love it. I get it. You know when you go to a local cruise night, you see some cars roll in, you feel yeah. it's like they almost got it. You don't see a lot of almost got it cars in here. Remember the Nicholas Cage movie where he, yeah. where he drove? I, I bought both of those cars. I had the hero car and the um, regular car, the, the one that was crashed. <laughs> three GSs in a row. You know what I like also about this? Not only the different colors, got, those are the three wheel options. Yeah. So that's yeah. really cool. That's really cool. Yeah. 69 SC Rambler. I love these cars. I've got one of these. Ramblers. I've got one of these located. It's got 2310 miles. These are They're yeah. really cool. <laughs> They're fast too. Yeah. It's a 390. Yeah. 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 It's amazing. I don't know how much work it is put on a show like this. I thank you for doing it. Well, and you also think about it. You know how much work it is to bring a car to the show. Yeah. We've got cars here. From all across the country, we get car shipped in from the UK, from Canada, you know, and, and people from all around the world come here to see them. Yeah, and these are the best of the best. Yeah. Hemi car, four speed 66 Hemi car, four speed 66 Charger. They have. I mean, anything pre-70 in the Hemi market is a buy. Right. It just is. I love the interior, the four, four bucket seats. And then when you hit 70, it just goes to the roof. Now the 68 Chargers. Right. Still pre-70 is probably the strongest value of Chargers. Well, Bullen. I mean, yeah. Bullen's heard that market Absolutely. since the movie came out. Like, Hemi car, Hemi car, Hemi car, six-pack car. You know. How about a Richard Petty car? I love that. He was the king. Yeah. 
like we were talking about earlier in NASCAR, you know, Richard Petty was running well over 200 miles an hour in the big wing cars. Yeah. And again, they're not doing it now. No. It's crazy. Because they made it safer. Too safe. Yeah. Well, it's a fine line. You don't want to kill too many people, but you also want to have people watching the no, I don't want to kill anybody, but I, I don't want to sit there and watch people go around a track at 180 miles an hour with 30 or 40 years ago. That, well, in 84, uh, Allison ran 234. Yeah. All I got to do is put a couple of manhole covers there. <laughs> yeah, that slows them down there. How are you doing, sir? How are you? Good, man. Good to see you. Yeah, you too, man. I know you're a Ford guy, but good to see you looking at the Mopars. No, I'm everything. Yeah? I'm an equal opportunity employer, sir. I love Mopars. Yeah? Are you anything good lately? All the time, every week. Good for you. Good, good stuff. Yeah, but probably the coolest thing we found recently was uh, Sunbeam Tiger Show number one. Nice. So we bought that two weeks ago. But what did you bring? Black Sunbeam. Beautiful. Tell us about it real quick. Oh, my dad bought this car in February of 1978 out of Hemmings. Okay. And uh, I was born in March. So and I. What did this cost in February of 78 in Hemmings? Sixteen hundred dollars. Well, that was cheap. I would have guessed a little bit higher than that, but. Yeah, yeah, my dad was 22 years old, went down there with some cash in his pocket. So and, uh, I'm assuming you don't want to double your money. No. <laughs> that, that. Dad joke of the day. Offer him triple. Offer him triple. <laughs> no, it's, making triple. it's a member of the family, man. I hear what color combo. It is, thank you. Speed car too. It is a four speed. Black and tan, 446 back four speed car that the family's owns at 78. Thanks for bringing that. Yeah, That's thank awesome. You, man. Thank you. Have a great day. Yeah, you too, Dennis. I love the pink cars. Yeah. Whether you're talking about a Playboy pink Mustang or a Panther pink or a Moulin Rouge Mopar, it's just so cool yeah. they did that back then. And that's a good pink too. That's got to be a crazy rare car. Yeah. I well, look at that. It's the only one. It's the only one. So yeah, that's, that's hard to get that. Than that. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. The color becomes such a big factor when a guy's putting a collection together. Yes. To me. The ones that are the most valuable are generally black. So many people don't know much about those Avanis, and that was such a neat car. There's a whole lineup of them back here, too. Yes, the Studebaker guys love to come to the show because they get a big section, they get to show the cars and educate people. Orange house suit with orange stripes. Yeah. That was cool. Mopar's always been bold. Yeah. So it's a test car from Wayne State University. One's 12s. Yeah. The reason why Carol Shelby didn't get the supercharged. Right? Right. Because yeah. Studebaker. Granitelli. Well, they bought the full in Paxton, right? Yeah. Well, so they were they didn't give Carol very many superchargers. Right. Had they not have been building the R2s and putting superchargers on their own 289s, I believe there'd be many, many more 65, perhaps all the way to 70 supercharged shells. You know how expensive the supercharger is, though. I mean, what was the 67 Paxton option was like 800 bucks. Yeah, like 795. Huge yeah. right. And a GT500 was like 800 bucks. Right. <laughs> so, you know, guys go all take the two carburetor big block. But if you well, but if you were lucky enough, which I don't think hardly anybody was, right. to drive them side by side, I think you take the super. You would, you would. But again, there's what 35, 67, yeah. and then there's 31, 35. So it, it, yeah. it, it's crazy rare. Like but this is here, R3 superchargers, or uh, Bonneville record. So not only was the Avani R2 supercharged car. The fastest car of the year, and faster than the Ferrari, which is crazy. And look at this, this is a world's record holder car in 64. Now the R3s, they cranked, they cranked up the supercharger, more boost, the engine is imprinted, balance, all that stuff. So the R3 over the R2, R3s are a really special engine. I've actually never seen it. Yeah. I've never seen one. Studio makers way underappreciated, don't you agree? Car you dream about? Right, One of the cars that actually set the speed record. Car number eight, R3 Bonneville car. That is yeah. not to beat a dead horse. Fastest car in the world that year. Yeah. Can you imagine being in your Ferrari? One of these come whizzing by you. <laughs>
Oh, what do you want? Way ahead of their time, too. Fiberglass body. You guys literally have come up with the best of the best. Unbelievable. In 15 years in a row, you keep doing it. Wow. Well, 14. 14. This is we 15. Did, we had a breather. Our 15th year, but it's a 14th show because we had a pandemic. Gotcha. Which was fun. So, Macaquin, muscle cars and Corvette Nationals. So I would imagine early on the Corvettes kind of ruled the show. It was, there used to be the Chevy Vet Fest was here at this location. So they shut down that show and we decided to take over the venue and do our own show. So it was still, the first couple years, everybody who showed their Corvettes at Chevy Vet Fest wanted to bring their Corvettes. So right. we accommodated, you know, as many as we can, but we wanted to have a blend. There's only so much room, so much real estate. And we, Going out and expanded it over the years, you know, it just needs four space, four space. But. And then did it. Well, there's an L89, which right. I love. I think right. they're undervalued. It's L89, it's L88, another L89, there's L88s all over the place here. I mean, there's the, there's the Sebring Daytona Corvettes up front. Uh, I saw that when we walked in. I think there's a couple of LeMond Corvettes here, too. So The Corvette guys over the years tended to be, probably led the industry as far as restoration. Kind of invented. Probably for it. Kind of, yeah, yeah, I guess I really did invent it. You know? And it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have re-stamped them. <laughs> Repurposed, reimagined. <laughs> right. <laughs> Numbers matching doesn't always mean what you think it does. I think part of the reason, well, obviously, Corvettes, I mean, mid year Corvettes were my favorite car the entire forever. Me too. You know, 53 to 67, they're all fantastic. Yeah. But I think. A reason why they led the market restoration because they always had good value. Right. You know, you don't just jump into a. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. I don't want to use a bad example, but I think that's why the Corvettes led the well, market restoration. Well, they're always. It's always been America's sports car. Right. So it's always been a great image car. It's always a great performance. You know, and, and they weren't hugely expensive. It wasn't a Ferrari. Right. You know, so it wasn't a Mercedes. You know, 300 SL. It was attainable. So if you had a good job. You could, and you could afford a car, you could save a little more and afford a Corvette. And then you're all of a sudden, you're, you're, your status kind of went, you're, you're a Corvette owner, you're back right, a Corvette. Right. And they're such great cars and such great style. I love them. I mean, I, I think mean, the 67 drives is fantastic. If they made 300 mid-year coupes, they'd be worth millions of dollars a piece. Right. If they made tens of thousands, so they're still affordable and they still look at that Elkhart blue car. I mean, love it. Great car. The interior looks great. The outside looks great. The sounds look easy to fix. So for many, many years, everybody's goal was to get as many options as you could on one and get as original as you could. Yeah. Now, when you find a car that's not numbers matching, which you should just be the kiss of death on these cars, it doesn't matter because they're getting reimagined in the rest of it. Yeah. So literally, every 53 to 67 cars get saved. Right. Which I think is really cool. But isn't it crazy that you can the best original like 435 coupe let's say you spend let's get crazy three hundred thousand dollars for a car that a guy spent years and years and years nos parts nos tires all that stuff to make it exactly like that factory. and then you get a resto bond so for a million bucks not one original car on we can sit down and do a podcast over that yeah but i'm shows, with you <laughs> shows you where the market's going yeah but if you're 10 years down the road which ones work more right the original car has to be because the it's rest like, of us are getting dated. Yes. It's like if you go to your tailor, I'm sure you have one, and you get a custom made suit, fit you, your colors, your fabrics, you're going to wear that suit, you're going to love it. When you're done with it, where does it go? Goodwill. Yeah, nobody's going to wear it. Right. But I'm we'll not saying rest of us to go to Goodwill. Right, right. For the record. But as far as value, as far as value I put my money in the original one. Right. I do like money. the rest of us. I understand yes. it. We'll spend time on that later. Colin, that was amazing. Yeah. Well, Thanks for your time. Well, did you like the show? That's the most important question. It was incredible. I'll be back. Yeah. I'm actually embarrassed that I've never been here before. I'm embarrassed you haven't been here too after 15 years. You think you would have stopped the visit? You should be. I mean, this is this is my favorite stuff. Yeah. What you put together here, in a lifetime, you're not going to see this. No. And that was the idea that the show to end all shows, you know, but to do it year after year after year, but you don't have any amazing cars around right there. And they're hiding. As soon as somebody knows there's a good venue, you know, there was a magazine early on, they called this a couple beats of muscle cars. And that was like a good shot in the arm because all of a sudden the muscle car guys are like, wait a second, there's a show worthy of this or that, you know, a two Tornado or whatever. All of a sudden we get all the rare, rarest 
one of one stuff. I mean, this is the place to show it. So what you guys have created is amazing. The rarest of the rare, American Muscle and the Corvettes that were found this year. Right. Or at this show. Yeah. And they rotate them every year. Yeah. And, and we have people that restore cars specifically to come here and unveil them. We do our unveilings. You know, we do 15 unveilings a year. Um, and guys restore a car just to bring it here and have this to show that they debut the car in. And you can spend countless hours watching shows, but you're never going to see all these. Right. But you saw them today. Thanks for your time. It was Thank amazing. Thank you so much. Appreciate McCacken, you by sponsored by Meekum, none other than Mr. Colin Comer. Thanks again. That was awesome. Thank you. Let's go home. Yeah. Well, the convention center, where do we go eat? They all said Gibson's, which is just a hop, skip, and jump across the street. Here's the problem. It's a two-hour steakhouse, and we got 30 minutes. So we came in the bar, snuck in, got a table, and see what happens. Here's your pre-tip. Thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, here's our problem. We have a half hour to eat. What Let's can, do it. What can we get in 30 minutes? We'll get the menu right away, okay? Perfect. I like that. Power of the Hondo. The pre-tip. I've never seen that before. So pre-tip is to ensure prompt service. Initially, the tip was given in advance, not at the end. Watch how good the service is, because you got tipped in advance. How do you like your meat, Chris? Medium rare. Let's do it. So we really? are. All right, I'll do a six ounce filet. We only have uh, ten ounce. Uh, ten ounce butterfly, split it in half. Not because I'm being cheap. And mashed potatoes. Medium rare. Yes, ma'am. Cream spinach. And you can pull that off in less than 30 minutes. You're a rock star. I'll do my best. So, literally in less than three minutes, we got a crab cake and some killer prawns. Looks like it's going to work. 30 minutes at Gibson's, pretty sure nobody's ever pulled that off. What do you think about that, Sajin? Pretty rad, sir. Better than airport food. What do we have now, ma'am? We have right here the filet butterfly medium rare, okay. cream and spinach, and mashed potatoes. Outstanding. <laughs> There's a play for you, Cindy, because we're splitting yeah. that. We only have 30 minutes. I would love for you, you to do it. All right. You can give him the big one because he's a growing boy. <laughs> I'm an old man. There you go. <laughs> I'll run to get another side of the um, Fernet sauce for you guys, okay? You still have a bite in there? I'll you know what, right ma'am? It's okay. I don't need it. I'm going to give that to Sinji. Don't worry about it. All right. You're a rock star. So you did you that go. in 12 minutes. There you go. Outstanding. You. Thank you. Now, <laughs> if you can bring me the check. I'll do it. Thank you. Get you some of that. Gives us Steakhouse. I'm pretty sure that's a world's record. We had appetizers in three minutes, and nine minutes later, we had medium rare butterfly, 12 ounce filet, split in half with spinach. Cream spinach. So, we got to do the best bite real quick because we're in a hurry. We don't want to miss the airport. You know what it's going to be. We're going to do medium rare filet, a little bit of mashed potato on it. To drive you guys crazy in TV land out there, I'm going to do my pork upside down. Put a little spinach on there. Oh, 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 oh. Great prawns, outstanding crab cakes with super spicy sauce and a perfect steak in 12 minutes. Get you some of that. See you next week. As always, please like, share, and follow, and most importantly, subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you next week.